Hey everybody. So in the context of the th mass production 3D printing processes that are kind of coming about, why are 3D printer farms the, the main option that Slant 3D focuses on? So within the 3D printing industry, there are actually quite a few processes that can produce hundreds, thousands, even potentially millions of parts. But Slant 3D focuses exclusively on FDM and FDM printer farms. We don't have super fast machines. We don't have some magic secret sauce in that component of it. We have hundreds and thousands of machines that we are deploying to create hundreds of thousands of parts. But there's other ways of doing that. So there's like the multi-jet fusion process. There are many SLA pr uh, print processes. Uh, multi-jet fusion is fairly fast and produces thousands of parts if they're small. And SLA is similar. SLA can produce a part very quickly, pulling it out of a vat of resin, but again, is kind of limited to certain small sizes, but both of them are faster processes than FDM, but they're, they're large single machines. So the thought process of why you use a print farm over some other process, why do we focus exclusively on FDM? Well, the first reason is focus. We do not believe that a, a manufacturing company should diversify processes if the existing processes they have are not fully optimized. We are nowhere near being done with doing what you can do with 3D print farms. There are so many more layers and capabilities and functionality that we can get out of that system. So there's no interest at all really in diversifying processes and putting in a bunch of SLA printers or putting in a bunch of powder machines or something along those lines. So focus, number one, is the, the number one reason that we have one process inside of Slant 3D. We wanna be exceptionally good at that. Okay, so now why FDM? FDM is the only process that you can do a print farm with um, reliably. The reason for this is SLA, uh, there are SLA print farms out there. There are, uh, Form Labs has experimented with this where you have many machines lined up and a robot arm pulling off parts and that kind of thing. That's not uncommon or a new idea. The reason SLA is not the choice that we went with is because SLA itself is very messy and produces parts that still require as much human touch as the worst FDM part with tons of support and they're messy. They're, they've got goo all over them that has to be washed off. So when we were thinking about the, the farm style of manufacturing, there was no reason to go after SLA because it was just too messy. The reason we don't go after SLS inside of a print farm is because it's too expensive. You can't have hundreds of SLS machines. They're just not economic at that quantity of machines. But if the quantity of machines is the problem, why go after the print farm? Well, this is kind of an argument within the industry that's going to be ongoing for a very long time. Print farms allow a huge amount of redundancy and a huge amount of discrete customization and, and tracking because each individual machine is basically a spot on a shelf. Uh, that can be barcoded and tracked and controlled very easily. Whereas with batch machines, like many powder bed machines, you have all the parts and then you shake them out onto a table and you hope that those parts have a barcode embedded in them. Otherwise, you're eyeballing where the part comes from. The tracking of those parts is very difficult. But again, if it's between print farms and a large expensive machine that produces lots of parts, we prefer the print farm because the print farm is organic and reliable. There is no single point of failure. If one machine goes down in a batch of 100 machines, big deal. But if one machine goes down in a batch of 10 machines where they're all powder bed machines, that is a big deal. But also fundamentally, the problem that we have with the big expensive machine is that it's not a big development above and beyond what molding is. Molding, you can swap out molds and make many different materials, but you still have this large, heavily expensive, monolithic, single point of failure device. And the production systems and additive follow that same format. And, and we disagree with it because it's just not very reliable and it's not very iterative or organic. We like the format of the farm because it's exceptionally robust. It allows a lot of variability very quickly while still having the scale and the ability to produce thousands of parts. So that's the difference between thousands of cheap machines versus one big expensive machine with a single point of failure. 
The other reason uh, that we like FDM over all the other processes is that it requires the least amount of touch after a part is made. If a part is designed well for FDM, it will come off the machine fully complete. At Slant 3D, we use the phrase, we have a warehouse where the shelves make the product. That is literally an operating goal that we go after. If you are not able to have a normal warehousing associate work within the farm, uh, sorting and shipping parts, then it's not ready yet. Someone should be able to go to the machine, remove the machine, and throw it into a box. That is absolutely and always will be impossible with any other print process. Powder and resin systems always have to be washed. And if they have supports, they definitely have to be touched by hand. Whereas FDM machines and parts can actually be rattled around to get rid of supports pretty easily. And quite frankly, if it's designed correctly, you don't have to have supports at all. So long term, in the context of how the market evolves, we believe that design expertise will catch up to be able to utilize FDM appropriately and design for additive correctly so that the additional touch that's very common with like FDM and 3D printed parts right now will be eliminated. And then you have all the other advantages of the print farm behind it. But lastly, the reason we use FDM inside of our print farms is because of the supply chain. If we are trying to produce final parts within the current manufacturing industry, the current manufacturing industry is built on top of injection molding. So you have to be able to produce within that ecosystem. FDM is the only process that utilizes all of the materials from traditional injection molding. Therefore, we have that entire supply chain uh, built and ready to go because any of those beads that were used in molds can now be turned into filament and can now be run with FDM machines. Not always the best idea, but it can be done as compared to all of these other processes where they literally have to have new materials invented, formulated, and then brought to production. So they just have a cost and engineering and development hurdle that's just not necessary. So for us, print farms uh, check a lot of boxes. They're able to produce parts very reliably uh, without major single points of failure. They're able to hit large scale. They take advantage of an existing supply chain that is very strong and robust. They allow a lot of variability, but also allow a very easy downstream process to where a part can come out of a print farm fully complete and not need any other touch. So it can be put into warehouses, it can be put into existing fulfillment infrastructure. Whereas all the other processes are just big monolithic monsters that need the world to move around them in a lot of ways. But they have the advantage of being able to print an injection molded part as the injection molded part would have been molded. Whereas FDM has fewer, more design considerations. So that's the disadvantage, but all of the other advantages wildly outweigh that, especially as new products are development, developed considering 3D printing. So those are the reasons of why Slant 3D focuses exclusively on FDM print farms. It, this is one of the longer videos, but we wanna go deep into the explanations of why we do what we do and often how we do it. So let us know down below if there's other parts of uh, Slant 3D and how we do things that you'd like to know about. Uh, we're happy to talk about them. Have a great day, everybody.